My name is Manuel Guerrero, and, and my background is in sociology and applied ethics. I work within the neuroethics team in, at Uppsala University at Centre for Research Ethics and Bioethics, and I am part of the World Package 9, the Human Brain Project. As you will see in the HBP, uh, we have a specialized uh, um, World Package which deals with responsible research and innovation. So a short presentation about the Human Brain Project for, for those of you who are not part of, of this project. It's a very complex and large project, as you surely may know, um, as the brain is very, very complex. It needs different type of disciplines that meet together, um, neuroscientists, uh, uh, professionals who are coming from computer science, uh, who are developing different type of technologies. And also uh, we have uh, other um, colleagues who are coming from social sciences and humanities and uh, philosophers and ethicists and managers and communication. So it's a very, very complex project. And um, we have nine work packages in, the, in this last phase of the Human Break Project in SDA3. Um, we, have, we are building this uh, eBrains uh, collaborative research infrastructure, uh, which will be on um, the Human Brain Project's legacy and final product to advance in neuroscience, medicine, and computing. And we have partnering projects. All in the Human Brain Project, we are almost 500 uh, researchers who are meeting from different countries, from different disciplines and trajectories. And, and in these nine work packages, the work package nine is specialized in responsible research and innovation. And that's a sign how the HPP and eBrains take seriously this uh, framework from Horizon 2020. And in SDA3, which is the last phase of the Human Brain Project, um, we have this World Package 9, which is specialized in responsible research and innovation, but we also have embedded uh, at this task within the other World Packages. Um, some of the World Packages uh, are working with basic science, other are developing the research infrastructure, everything collaboratively. And then we have some work packages. We have overarching activities that has to do with communication, education, management, and also responsible research and innovation. And within the different work packages, we have dedicated task and subtask that work directly with researchers and, and, and technicians um, uh, addressing and reflecting and researching around responsible research and innovation related issues. And within World Package 9, we have different uh, tasks and one of them um, has to do now more specialized in responsible research and innovation in task 9.2. And there we have two um, two working, working groups and committees. One is the dual use working group with uh, chair is uh, Inga Urikan. And there in 9.4, we have the ethics coordination of the HBP where the ethics, ethics director is with his team. And, and there is there and the so-called ethics rapporteur program. And in addressing dual use issues in the HBP has been a collaboration between this dual use working group and the ethics rapporteur program. And I will briefly um, tell you about these two uh, working spaces. The Ethics Rapporteur Program is uh, one of the key uh, ethics governance structures of the HBP. The strategy has been that we have an, an external ethics advisory board, the so-called EIB, and they are a specialist and they're coming from these different disciplines and they are independent to the project and they are giving advice uh, to the HBP. And within the HPP, we have different type of ethics related structures. One of them is the ethics rapporteur program. And the strategy has been that it's a bottom up approach. So we have this external ethics advisory board and different um, overarching ethics related uh, structures, the embedded neuroethics related tasks within the work packages. And each work package um, have from one to five ethics rapporteurs. Uh, the ethics rapporteurs are um, researchers and technicians and um, coming from different trajectories in their, their cycle of, uh, of career. They can be senior researchers, but also uh, postdoctoral students or, or PhD students. 
And they are not uh, specialized in ethics, but they are very involved in their discipline and research in the project. And they are helping to address and identify ethical and social issues, the ongoing and emergent ethical and social issues that arise from their, uh, uh, from their daily, daily work. And we have a coordination of this uh, ethics rapporteur program. Uh, we are 21 rapporteurs now, and I am the coordinator of this program. And we have monthly meetings. And, um, and this ethics rapporteur program serves as an infrastructure as well as a dynamic network for the dual use uh, working, uh, working group. Each ethics rapporteur, each work package, has um, uh, one or two uh, ethics advisory board, so-called matchups. So they are having uh, bilateral meetings. Um, usually, each two months they they met and there they share the different ongoing ethical and social issues that their operators are addressing, and identifying, and they are uh, getting there on in a dialogical way reflection and, and advice how to handle this, these issues. The Dual Rules Working Group is a specialized uh, now structure within the HBP that uh, works uh, with the area framework and is in charge of the responsible research and innovation specialized in dual use of concerns issues. So it has to do with the approach that the HBP has uh, with regards to dual use. And we have a bi-monthly meetings, and it's, our, it's a, what we call a safe space where researchers and technicians the different coming from the different work packages from the HBP, there we uh, identify and raise uh, questions that has to do with dual use, with potential dual use issues in the, in the HBP. And in a collaborative way, um, we are reflecting and, and learning from best practices how we can identify and also and manage or mitigate, for example, issues that, that can arise. And a way of systematize this type of work is what we have been calling the one-pagers. So the one-pager is a, it's a very concrete and specific uh, um, case in which this dialogical approach um, uh, materializes itself in the, in the HVP. The one pager is an overview about we map different ethical and social issues, those emergent and ongoing ethical and social issues that arise from the, the, the different uh, working groups and research uh, parts and innovation uh, of, the, of the HPP. And annually, we map this at work package level and we share this in a compilation of the so called one pagers. And which type of issues do you, you usually? Uh, usually identified there. There has to do, some of them has to do with, with research ethics and compliance. And here is very, very important that uh, responsible research and innovation goes beyond uh, research ethics and compliance. It's an important part. Of course, we have all we have to comply with the legal framework that has to do with uh, their European area of research and all the human rights um, um, instruments that we have the European Convention of Human Rights, etc., and also there are each country's uh, legality and its institutions uh, instruments as well. But responsible research and innovation goes beyond uh, compliance, so it's only one part. And we usually identify other type of issues as well that has to do, for example, data-related issues in the HPP. We um, uh, collect, uh, process, analyze, store different type of data coming from humans, uh, research participants, but also from animal models or uh, algorithms, etc. So there, there's a complexity in the data ethics related issues. And, and for that, we have in the HVP a data governance working group, which is specialized also in works across the whole, the whole project. We have neuroethics in, in the HBP. Philosophy has been very, very important in the reflection part of the HBP. And it's, a, it's one originality of, of, of this uh, big um, um, research project. That philosophy, it's a part of a core part of, of the work that, that we are doing. 
and dual use and misuse is one of the of, of the of the topics of this one pagers but also there are uh, collaboration with the diversity and equal opportun opportunities coordination team in the hvp um commercial exploitations etc so it's it's different type of issues that we can identify and map in those uh, one pagers the methodology to write this one pager it's a deliberative uh, process we are trying to work um, with um, a bottom up uh, approach but with support from a top down and from this external advisory body it's um, mainly qualitative in the sense that we don't uh, conduct survey and don't, we don't do statistical uh, analysis here it's more reflection so that we open in these safe places, uh, we open conversations and robust conversation where we can go and, and reflect and anticipate uh, and uh, after that act uh, around the issues that we are identifying. And in that way, we are assuring that, that the project is uh, ethically and uh, sound and socially uh, more acceptable and uh, it's the one pager has a flexible design so for example some work packages uh, choose one technology in which they 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 want to reflect upon different type of ethical and social issues other cover the whole work package with a different task and work at task level and it can also be conducted in experience way so which is the experience of, of reflecting upon these different type of of issues and uh, in the HPP, we have, for example, in the HPP uh, technology catalog, and there we can choose one technology. It can be a case for this type of, of reflection, and there we can identify potential dual use of concern issues, for example. In parallel to, to, this, uh, to this work, and, and because of the researchers, they don't uh, have to be ethicists, that's not their role, but it's important that we all have uh, researcher awareness. Um, we have different type of support activities that the HPP is assuring, giving to the work packages. For example, capacity building activities. This uh, webinar is part of, 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 of this activity. And um, we have different type of working groups. I mentioned the data governance working group, the dual use working group, the gender and equality opportunities uh, coordination. We have our animal ethics um, uh, coordinator in the HPP compliance manager, data protection officer. So there are different structures in which there are researchers and technicians, there, there are the different members of the ATP can, give, can get support in order to identify and address this different type of, of issues. And we have also support from the, uh, from the infrastructure that we have been building in the HVP. We have our own collaboratory platform, and then we have on, on living documents, each work package as a, a folder, for example, with draft documents, and there they are working online uh, from different parts of, of Europe, um, addressing these issues and making comments, etc. And we have also ethics resources, which are which has, are open for the general public in our uh, Human Brain Project uh, website. And and uh, as it has been mentioned uh, before, we are working with this area framework. So it has to do with anticipation, reflection, engagement, and action, and these different types of topics uh, uh, raises. And dual use of concern is one that uh, we have in, in the end part of the SGA2 phase of the HPP, we made a first, we can call it scanning of dual potential dual use of concern issues in the different, uh, in that moment, sub-projects. And now we are repeating this experience with a more more systematized uh, way. And because we have gained more maturity within the Human Brain Project with regard to these issues as well. And here is the general structure of the, uh, of the one pager. Um, so it, the one pager has to do with, it can be two or three pages long. It's, it's historically, we call it, one page started as a one pager. So we have our, our project scope description, description of the work package or the technology or the case, and then which are the main ethical and social issues that we are identifying at, at the work package level. And then we have a specialized part of that has to do with dual use uh, issues and there the dual use working group 
has prepared uh, um, a different type of resources, for example, their Horizon 2020 um, uh, ethics self-reflection questionnaire has a, a part that has to do with dual use and other type of instruments are giving support for this type of, of reflection or data protection related issues and then open to future 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 questions and this process uh, ends it takes uh, uh, almost um, around eight eight months of, of work with capacity building um, within and this process closed in the HBP summit uh, where we hope that uh, each year we we meet physically with the rapporteurs and their ethics advisory board uh, matchups and the dual use working group as well, and there we discuss uh, a first draft of this one pager. And after that, we have the so-called trilateral meeting where their ethics director with the ethics coordination team and other RRI related uh, um, actors in the HBP meet the work package leader with the ethics rapporteur and the ethics advisory board matchup. And there we discuss and finalize this one pager. And it, it is an instrument uh, for the HBP to navigate on the ethical and social issues that emerge, but it's also very useful for reporting processes um, for their European Commission, um, uh, for example. And there we have this, this loop and we start it over. So we have different updated uh, one pagers. And as mentioned, the dual use topics now take a, a very important centrality in this uh, one pager now that we are um, we are transitioning from the HPP to eBrains to the to this collaborative research infrastructure. That was for my part. So thank you very much for your attention.